Hi everyone, I'm um, Kathleen Swaddling, Treader's wife in, in Sydney, and it's just been a pleasure listening to everything um, so far today. It's just been fantastic, and I can't believe how quickly the time's gone. Anyway, I'm going to introduce you to our next speaker, who is Sandra Berger Gisneros. She's a meditation and mindfulness teacher and gave a wonderful presentation last time. And now, Sandra, you can talk about what you're going to, where you come from and what you bit about yourself and then into your presentation. Over to yeah. you. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, uh, that's me, Sandra. I'm, uh, I'm originally from Peru. Um, but I lived 23 years in Switzerland, working as a social educator there. I'm a Urantia reader since uh, 93, where I was introduced by a very special person to the book. And since then, I really have been going through many periods of uh, really reading the book, then studying the, group, the book, and then really trying to apply the teachings of the book uh, into my life. Uh, so uh, the presentation that I'm going to uh, bring to you is a first step towards compassion. I don't know if I can share the screen already. I think you have to let me. Okay, Sandra, I just need to make you co-host, I think. Uh, where have you gone? Okay. Okay, Sandra, I just need to make you co-host. Okay. You should be able to do it now. Okay. Okay, here we are. Okay. Good. So, um, as I said, I'm going to um, <clears throat> introduce um, you to my presentation. It's a first step towards compassion, and it's really a practical approach. Uh, so since it's a practical approach, I invite you first uh, to close your eyes. Um, just close your eyes and lower your gaze if you don't want to close your eyes. And um, just um, connecting to yourself, sitting here with a sensation uh, of your body, maybe your feet touching the floor. And just uh, breathing in and out, connecting with this sense of breath, the breath that is sometimes very, very easy to ignore, keeps us alive. And then connecting with a sense of gratitude in the breath. So maybe gratitude for something simple that you have experienced today, maybe grateful because uh, you could wake up this morning or maybe you know you could take a shower a warm shower maybe it was the smile of your loving ones or maybe the fact that we have this technique that allow us to connect to each other through zoom just being connected with that and bringing a sense also of kindness to this feeling. And maybe sensing this kindness, kindness going through our breath while we breathe in and this kindness and gratitude we breathe out. And we, through this kindness and gratitude, we are connecting with the source of kindness and gratitude, which is our creator, our thought adjuster. Just let yourself be embraced from that loving kindness. Just be yourself, be supported in this loving kindness.
Letting go through you, through the in breath and the out breath. Then coming back to the Zoom room. Open your eyes. So starting with this um, sense of kindness and gratitude, I, um, I would like to first um, bring a um, definition of compassion. Because I think that uh, I'm going to go later on to, to why I'm connecting also with gratitude and, and kindness. The, the topic from today is really one step towards uh, compassion. And compassion is really this um, is a sensitivity to suffering, for, uh, to suffering for ourselves and others with a desire to alleviate and prevent. And um, I would like to talk to you today how we can connect really to this compassion. We know that... Um, or I believe that really compassion is a part of this triangle, which um, love is inside and through gratitude, compassion and kindness, we can really experience really this pure and elevated love that comes from, from the source of our creator, from from, um, from really um, um, this love that is profound and, and it really goes deep, deep in us. And in our, in our human experience, um, sometimes to go into experience kindness and gratitude and compassion is difficult because the way our um, human body is built and the way also how our, our experiences have um, influenced us in life. So um, the Urantia book says that um, why well, I, I choose, it talks a lot about love and compassion, but I choose these two quotes uh, that it talks really that the capacity to understand and forgive the capacity to love is really godlike. So, in the way we are really knowing our father and connected with our father, we are going to be able to really love and to experience kindness and compassion. And Jesus also uh, stated that um, really the experience in the connection with our human uh, fellows, with a uh, our brothers and sisters is really discover values and discover their motivation. And uh, sometimes with someone irritates us or feels resentment, uh, really is helpful to discern his viewpoint and, and that really can um, allow us to be tolerant and this tolerance will grow into friendship and ripen into love. So, um, before I go uh, into really, I would like to come back to, to what is really um, compassion. And for that, I would like to invite you in an exercise. So, um, maybe if you want <clears throat> also to close your eyes and imagine yourselves uh, in a situation in your life. Um, imagine bringing bring into, into your mind a, a situation where you felt misfortune or felt inadequate. Uh, bringing just into mind um, this situation, whatever it may be, and just um, imagine how, what was the first thing that you, you told yourself when you were having this misfortune or when you feel not capable of doing something or were not able to, 
to do something. So what is the first thing that came into your mind? What were the feelings? Um, how did, do you, did you judge yourself? Bring in that moment and uh, what was your inner dialogue? What was the tone you spoke to yourself? So if you may now open your eyes. And just write um, in the chat, or if you want to unmute yourself and say just quick uh, the words that came, the first words that came into your mind when you were ha having this um, exercise. So I'm a, I'm a failure I have here. I fail on doubt. So in my experience, when I, I have done this kind of, um, or when I have been having this kind of, uh, of experiences, uh, the first thing that came into my mind most of the time is um, like the first, the first uh, share here, I'm a failure or what am I doing or what am I doing this, this, in this way? That's the first that comes into my mind. And, um, and sometimes um, I, I try to imagine what would I respond or how I would respond if some friend of mine would come with the same, with the same um, problem or the same experience? How would I react to this friend? And um, maybe you can also close, close your eyes and imagine how would you really react to this friend if it comes and tells you, um, I have been having a problem or I, I couldn't react or I, I failed in this, in this situation. So what would you say to this, to this brother or, or sister or friend? And if you want to share also in, in the chat or unmute yourself and tell me about it. I'm with you, you're not alone. So I think that, that um, the way we respond to our friends is most of the time a way that, uh, that is really that from, from uh, understanding, from uh, giving, giving the support, uh, saying to, to, to our friend, hey, it's going to be okay, uh, give this, this, um, and, uh, this, this love and this really compassion that, that sometimes uh, when we have had the experience, it's difficult to give to ourselves. And for, for this, we know that the Golden rule, as we know it from Jesus or from also many, many other uh, traditions in, in our planet is uh, really to love yourself or to your, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And, and the fatherly affection or what Jesus really gave to us is that we should love our fellow mortals as Jesus loves you so um i think that sometimes in in the what i want to to get into is that self uh, love is something that we need to really practice in order 
to be able to give that to others. Uh, sometimes when we are experienced or when we want to give something to others, we really need to, to really have it first. We cannot give uh, what we don't have. We cannot give what we don't have experience. And the same is also with compassion. So I think that um, the first step for me in my experience to, to give compassion to others and this understanding and love to others is to have this golden rule and put their own golden rule upside down. So, um, and I like to present it like that. You love yourself as you would love your neighbor and love yourself as Jesus love you. And, and with this, I don't mean that, uh, because I think that in our tradition as a human being, we have always, and most in the uh, Christian tradition, um, the one I grew up with was the Catholic Christian tradition, was always to um, be humble, to really give to others, and it's important the others, and that's, that's don't get me wrong, that's very important. But sometimes we are in moments in our life where we really forget ourselves. And as I said before, if we are not able to really practice for ourselves and, and have what we want to give, sometimes we, we find ourselves giving something that we don't have or we feel like empty or not capable or we feel like drained. So this kind of presenting the golden rule upside down is something that helped me very much or it helps also very much in the practice uh, uh, that I'm teaching now that is being in the present moment to really uh, be able to to give compassion to others. So self-compassion is something really, really important. And uh, with that, I would like to go back a little bit in what is the science be, be, uh, behind the compassion. And um, Compassion and love and uh, kindness is something that we need to learn. Um, we know that um, babies and um, uh, we we were we are born uh, by knowing how to eat, how to sleep, how to um, react to to things in life. But we don't know how to. We don't. We are not born with the capacity of love and have compassion. That is something that creates or originates in ourselves when we are born. So the first uh, oxytocin is, a, is, a, is something that is um, produced in ourselves when we are having this sense of uh, really touch is uh, it creates in the mother in and and child bond when they are born. Uh, this this is really the 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 thing that is created when when the child and the mother uh, from the first time that the mother is having the the child is what originates this. Um, sorry, my English is going away. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, it's a hormone. Thank you. Um, and uh, and it also is a hormone that it really uh, uh, goes in, into our body when we have this sense of touch. So when the child uh, is born, is is really the compassion and the love who creates this bond. And this how is this uh, this this hormone is is um, is is working in our body and sometimes what i what i want want to go uh, to with this is that sometimes in our experience of human beings there are a lot of people that have not really experienced this bonding um, ex uh, this bonding kind of of, uh, of experience with their mothers or they didn't have really this love and compassion during their early lives so they don't know really have to, they, they cannot relate to that. The good thing is that with time we can, uh, or with any time in our life, we are able to really learn it. 
So this is really something that can be learned. It's something that we can really um, develop and it's something that any time in life, people can really um, get to know. So uh, when we are really having this, this connection with other human beings through love and compassion is how this, this um, bond can be created and how this can be developed. So also it's, it's uh, important to know that we have um, this part of our really early um, reaction from our early uh, human uh, brain that is the fight and flight and freeze mode. This part of our brain that it really creates or activates when we are in stress uh, and really goes uh, compensate when we activate the oxytocin when we are really relaxing when we are really having this experience of of um, of awareness of being connected with someone of being into this uh, kind of bond with someone um, and sometimes this fight and flight and freeze models with was really some old part of our brain that warn, warns us uh, from from really when we are in danger um, which is good because sometimes we are in danger and we need to really be aware of what is around us. But sometimes when the danger is not really there, I mean, in the early times, our people or the, the, the people in the, in the early times were all the time in this, in this kind of, of, uh, of sense of danger. They had to be really be, be careful of, of the dinosaurs, of the attacks of, of the, the people who were attacking their, their tribes and so on. So this really activates very quickly and that's also good. But sometimes when there is no really danger here in our times nowadays, when this part of our brain activates, we having a, a sense of stress all the times, it can really turn against us. And then we are seen as the attacker and the attack. And the fighting modus in this part of the, of the brain turns into self-criticism and the antidote to that is self-kindness. And the flight part of our brain turns into self-isolation. And here is the antidote, the common humanity. The common humanity in this, uh, it means that we are really, when we are able to really connect and be aware that our other human beings also have these experiences of sorrow, these experiences of, of failure, these experiences of all also want to be love and love, we are really coming out from this self-isolation. We are really not into this kind of, of sensation that, that I have to really flight and, and, and go away because I'm the only one who suffers. And then there's also the third uh, reaction from this part of the brain that is self-absorption uh, that we when we, we tend sometimes, sometimes uh, when this part of our uh, self activates, we go into self-absorption. Sometimes we go into stories in our brain that give, give us the sensation that everything is wrong. We create also the stories in our brain. Um, and sometimes we got also to, into really depression, self-absorption. We catastrophize in our minds again and again what can be go wrong or what what could not what could have been better before. So here the antidote is self-awareness, being mindful from the moment and so get to really be in touch and working with our emotions and thoughts in, in this moment. And and here also I want to connect to this uh, self-awareness because for me, in my experience, um, also related to the Urantia book, is in self-awareness is the only way that you can really be connected with the father, mother, with our thought adjuster. Why? Because it's in the moment that really you are here with in your mind. When you are not self-aware and we are not in the present moment, 
really your mind and that's how our mind works that is all the time it's gonna bring us to the future it's gonna um, get us to the past that is also it's really practical sometimes when we have to plan things when we have to get a perspective of many things but time sometimes we get we have the tendency to go into this current of emotions and thoughts from our mind and we get lost there and we are acting in automatic pilot all the time in this really not being able to go out of that and and then we are creating this 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 modus of stress in our brain fight fight flight and freeze modus so here the self-awareness is really very useful come in this very moment practicing the self-kindness practicing the kindness to others which is in the connection to our humanity and um, and um, and practice really this sense of connection of gratitude and and love so um here uh, since we are really getting a practical approach to this i would like to give you another tool to really be able to practice this in the daily life and this is this beautiful practice uh, which is called glad practice so the glad practice uh, is an acronym for the g becoming aware of any gratitude the l bringing into mind one thing that we learn today the A is become aware of one small accomplishment you did today and the D becoming aware of a delight that touched you in the day. And with gratitude, becoming aware of something simple like we, the, the practice that we did before, like being really aware of um, the fact that you could really took, uh, you could took a shower in the morning, a warm shower, or, or you you could do your favorite meal now that the, there's a lot of times now being in lockdown or maybe you could really connect with the with the, your friends through through skype through through zoom something small it doesn't have to be really something huge and then the l for bringing in mind what you learned today that could be something that um really something small it could be having an open attitude what what you discover that in that day maybe it was a um, something you learned new from a friend or from yourself uh, at the moment that you were aware of, of the gratitude or maybe it could be um, seeing things from a new perspective that day and they from the accomplishment it could be something very very small also like you know getting enough sleep or um, you know uh, getting uh, dressed that morning even if you don't you're not going out with your favorite dress and dance or uh, just just um, uh, you maybe get to to do the the meditation you wanted to do the morning or more you had more time for connecting or doing the course online that you wanted and um, something small and then the delight it could be anything it could be you know being delight because you saw a flower and you saw the beauty of that flower it could be a delight um, because you receive a smile of your loving one or of your children or a giggling or some somebody really told you a, a joke that day so something very small it doesn't have to be something um huge so um, that is uh, from from the um, glad uh, practice, and then um, to close this uh, this presentation, I would like to to really bring you into um, a meditation, and this is called um, a Meta Bhavana meditation. It comes from the Buddhist tradition which is uh, really um, being uh, uh, in loving kindness, loving kindness meditation. So 
The invitation is to, to sit into a comfortable position. The back straight, uh, the best self supported. And closing your eyes. Or lowering your gaze if it feels better for you. And uh, connecting with your body sitting here, a sense of the touch, feet on the floor, grounding yourself, allowing yourself to be as you are in this moment. Nothing to do and nowhere to go. When it feels right, connecting with the gentle breath, noticing the movement of the breath, maybe placing a hand over your belly, feeling the breath, how it expands our belly. and how it returns to a neutral position in the out breath. And from this moment of awareness, of the body and breath and the present moment, practicing having a sense of warmth and kindness in the breath. Imagining it soothes you. Imagining it loosens or soft, softens every part of your body, every tension. Breathing in with kindness, breathing out with kindness. And now bringing into your mind yourself. This is in yourself in front of you. Connecting with a sense of kindness, giving yourself love and kindness. And if Kindness is not available from you at the moment, just practicing, connecting with the intention of giving yourself love and kindness. And practicing saying these words towards ourselves. May I be truly happy. May I love myself just as I am. May I feel free of pain and sorrow. May I be free to grow and evolve. Maybe placing that hand into your heart or touching yourself. Giving yourself love and kindness. And the in breath and the out breath.
So now bring into your mind a friend. You're sensing the presence of your friend, connecting with this friend, maybe hearing him or her. And then connecting with this common human experience. Like you, these friends experience painful situation and joy. Like you, it have regrets and experience happiness. And like you, wants to love and be loved. So this, as you can, connecting with this sense of kindness towards this friend. Breathing in kindness and breathing out kindness and well-wishing towards our friend. Now it feels good, let go of the brain and connecting with someone that it could be described as a neutral person to you. Someone you don't feel any special emotion towards. Maybe someone you know from seeing from far away or the cashier in the store. Just imagining this person in front of you. Also connecting with this common human experience. Maybe different than yours, but is similar. This person experiences you, hope and fear. Joy and sorrow. and wish to be loved and loved. And then saying these words towards this person as well, may you be truly happy. May you love yourself as you are. May you be free of pain and sorrow. May you free to grow and evolve. Breathing in kindness. I'm breathing out kindness towards this person. Now 
letting go from this neutral person and then connecting with, with someone you may have a difficulty with. And maybe here's better not to choose someone whom the difficulty is too strong or too overwhelming. Just bringing in mind your common human experience. And as much as you, maybe the person is also experienced this kind of emotions towards the difficulty. And like ask this person as friends and family. And this person wish to love and be loved. Experience also sorrow and joy. And it may be that kindness it's not here available, and that's okay. It's how it is. Letting go of any judgment. Or maybe connecting with this part of you that is able to give kindness, to experience kindness towards this person. Connecting with this part of the Father within you. And through that, giving kindness, living in kindness and our kindness towards that person. And maybe saying these words, may you be truly happy. May you, love, may you love yourself as you are. May you be free of sorrow and pain. May you be free to grow and evolve. And connecting to the breath, breathing kindness. I'm breathing out kindness and well wishing towards this person. Now, when we feel ready, broaden our awareness to include more people. First, bring in, in in mind the four people we have already practiced with, ourselves, our friend, the neutral person, and the person we find difficult. As best we can, imagine we are sitting in a circle. As, as best we can, connecting with our common human experience. Including more and more people now, thinking of people in all directions, people in our home, our neighbors, all in our town, our country, people from all the countries, all over the world. 
all experiencing a mixture of pain and pleasure just as we do. And no matter where they live, their age, origin or wealth, all experiencing pain and pleasure, sharing our common human experience. Now saying these words towards ourselves. May we all be happy and well. May we all take care of ourselves, of ourselves as we are. May we all we be free of pain and sorrow. May we all grow and evolve. Practicing allowing a sense of the whole world, breathing in kindness and breathing out kindness. And bringing you know, our attention to ourselves. Being present to the whole of the experience sitting here. Allowing ourselves to be exactly as we are, which in and of itself is an act of kindness. Allowing ourselves, sensing Earth supporting us, sensing the connection with not only the whole world, but the whole universe. Resting in the sense of kindness, gratitude and compassion. Before we end, this practice, I would like to read you a poem. Go gently today. Don't hurry or think about the next thing. Walk with the quiet trees. Can you believe how brave they are, how kind? Model your life after theirs. Blow kisses to yourself in the mirror, especially when you think you've messed up. Forgive yourself for not meeting your unreasonable expectations. You are human, not God. Don't be so arrogant. Grace, fresh air, clean water, good dogs. Spin something with, from joy. Open a window, even if it's cold outside. Sit, close your eyes, breathe. Allow the river of it all to pulse through eyelashes, fingertips, bird toes. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe until you feel your bigness, until the sun rises in your veins. Breathe until you stop needing anything too different. Open your eyes. I'm coming back to here. So with that, I end my presentation. Uh, with this very beautiful saying of the Dalai Lama, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If, if you want to be happy, practice compassion. So thank you very much.
Thank you, Sandra. Does anyone have any questions or any uh, any comments they'd like to make to Sandra? Frederico is saying thanks, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> 